Oh, hello. Welcome to Earth Today's Decay, where we celebrate births and beginnings of everything important since the dawn of time. It is April 1st. Uh, not really an April Fool's Day type person. Just want to keep this one straight. Um, what's, what's the most important thing to have happened today throughout space and time? Uh, 1883, Lon Chaney Sr., born. So here we are in the Lon Chaney Senior section. Um, if I had a cameraman here today, or woman, or person, place, or thing, uh, we could do a tracking shot and show you this uh, additional memorial stuff I have over here, but uh, this will have to do. Here you have a painting by Corel Mato of Philadelphia. And on top of that, you've got a original lithograph from Belgium, I think, from the lost film Thunder that he starred in, about 1929-1930. The rest of these are newspaper ads, all related to Lon Chaney Sr. Movie posters could cost you thousands of dollars, and whether it's um, partial page ads or full page Advertisements are like 10 bucks, maybe 30, but like, that's it. So I'm giving you my own little secret on Ron Cheney's birthday. Look for original newspaper ads and don't spend many thousands of dollars on uh, movie posters. Because some of this artwork is super cool. If you can see this here, Miracle Man 1919. This is an original 1919 full page newspaper advertisement. Again, I can't really get into the details here, but it, it it's beautiful artwork and like who was who was creating this? And it was like all for regional newspapers that like were distinct for their time, right? I guess these are in the promotional like the press books. Maybe they're just copying and pasting, so maybe it all actually comes from like Hollywood from one source from one artist or series of artists. But anyway, I just I love the uh, aesthetic of them. It's a blind bargain, unholy three, the 1925 one and 1931. Much back in Notre Dame, you can't see that, just pretend you can. Um, he who gets slapped is over here, the monster, the unknown, more thunder. Um, I'm, I'm referencing stuff that's off camera. Um, original um, uh, sheet music for Laugh Clown Laugh and the Miracle Man. What else? Here we have a. <clears throat> um, cover he was on for Movie Monthly. Very rarely did Lon Chaney make the cover. He wasn't really, you know, your Hollywood celebrity. Uh, I mean, he was a Hollywood celebrity, but he didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, as far as he was concerned, I have a... stuff all over the place, Lon Chaney Sr. here. Um, as far as he was concerned, between productions, between films, there was no Lon Chaney. He just would disappear. He was the man of a thousand faces, and um, one that was not interested in uh, attracting the camera was really his own. He wanted a private life. He didn't care about Hollywood parties or what eventually Kenneth Anger would um, um, exploit, I guess, in stuff like Hollywood Babylon. Uh, he wasn't interested in, in the parties or, or nightlife, but would just uh, escape Hollywood to his cabin uh, out in the middle of nowhere um, in like what's now a national park outside of San Francisco, I want to say. North California, at least. Um, which was, he, he had built and was designed by the first African-American architect. Uh, ever, oh, I'm blanking on that guy's name off the top of my head. And I've never been there because it still exists and it's now a ranger station. And it, it's been on my bucket list of things to go visit. Uh, was to hike to his cabin because this was like where he wanted to be. You know, he'd work and he'd put his heart and soul into his work, but what he really loved to do was uh, leave with his wife and son to his cabin and just you know surround himself in nature and and um, peace. Meanwhile, uh, what else? Uh, he's not a heart. For those that don't know, he's not really a horror actor. Lon Chaney Jr. Would have been a horror actor. There was no horror genre in 1919, 1925, 1930. 
that doesn't really exist until Dracula and Frankenstein in 31. Um, but he regularly explored the strange, unusual, the outcast, the deformed, um, the alienated, and oddball. Um, I, I won't say it's my favorite film of his, but one that really resonates with me is uh, his film Shadows from 1922, I think the year was, um, where he'd already started to play like people who are deformed in some form or another, um, clowns, uh, 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 he would certainly continue to focus on people with, uh, uh who, who were missing, uh, limbs, uh, Phantom of the Opera, Hunchback of Notre Dame aren't really monsters, they are, um, sad, hurting, tragic, flawed individuals. And uh, in the case of the film Shadows, he plays a um, an Asian uh, seaman who is on a boat that um, uh, shipwrecks, and he washes ashore in a um, coastal town that's like a very Christian town. And all of these idiotic white Christian people um, just make him into this laughing stock, and it is such a sad but wonderfully presented story. Where like the idea that you could have people performing in like yellow face, uh, that that's that's not what he's doing, not even a little bit. There's no jokes at his expense. He's just this character who is trying to make his way in life, and the the. Angry villagers are like the God-fearing, God fearing, quote unquote, God fearing Christians, and um, he he just he he wipes the floor with them. Um, as far as like narratively speaking, I mean this this is a phenomenal movie that could be made today, and should be made today, or at least should be seen today. How about that? Um, and at, and at the time. Like, you could have been uh, ostracized, maybe killed. You know, if you're uh, speaking up for uh, inherent systematic racism a hundred years ago, this could have been uh, career suicide or or worse, right? So, to me, when, when you see people who know something's wrong and stand up for what they believe in, not because... It's what we're doing today, which is even better <laughs> as, a, as a culture that we're there. But uh, at the time, it speaks that much stronger for the person who is taking a stand. And um, on April Fool's Day, on Janie's birthday, it's, it's a great day to celebrate him. Uh, one other thing, I, I, could, I, could, I could go on all day about... On Journey Senior, but I will just add this one thing that I have here. Thunder was the movie that possibly killed him. It's a lost film where he plays an aging train engineer. And this is uh, the original shooting script on mimeograph paper for the whole damn film. And Phantom Creep Theater, we do this Lon Chaney sh uh, Shall Never Die, Lon Chaney Shall Not Die uh, annual event at Coney Island. Uh, USA, like in the, on the sideshow stage, and we did a live recreation of this based off a shooting script. So, I don't know what the summer will hold this year, but maybe we could do another Lon Chaney Shall Not Die. I would really like to. Uh, each year is different. Each year we pick different content. We pair it with a Lon Chaney film. Um, spook show performances are uh, morbid magicians that conjure ghosts on stage and saw off people's arms or disembowel them, go on adventures and such, and uh, screen, uh, screen a feature film. And part of that as well is we do live recreations of worthwhile stuff, this being one of them. So what will the summer hold? I, I, don't, I don't know. This is not an announcement about our summer season. I don't know what's happening. But let's move right along because there's a lot more to go through here. Uh, Edna Tikhonor, I'm going to say. Uh, is not the first screen vamp, um, uh, but she might be 
truly. Um, the term vamp being like a theater barra type thing uh, doesn't really have the uh, supernatural element. Edna was the uh, female vamp vampire in Lon Chaney's uh, London After Midnight here. So predating Carol Borland in the Mark of the Vampire, you've, this was the, the lady that happened to uh, star opposite him. Uh, was this something she was really into or just a Hollywood um, actress that got the role? Either way, great stuff. Uh, what else? Out of the Inkwell cartoon, Coco the Clown, A Trip to Mars, premiered in 1924. Love this stuff. Excellent. Uh, excellent. Um early cartoon work that is really inspirational and lasts forever. The film Devil's Angels premiered in this day 1967 and Virginia Dentata, born 1971 on this day, bassist extraordinaire for Forbidden Dimension. I love Forbidden Dimension, Virginia. We've, we've had some great tours and hopefully more exciting events to happen in the future, but until tomorrow, good night. Forbidden Dimension and Lon Chaney Sr. all day, April 1st. From me to you, goodbye.